we started called the mystery of marriage. And I wonder if anyone got to unlock the mystery or not yet. Anyone? Anyone got how to unlock the mystery of marriage? If you got it, raise your hand. Okay, we have one liar over there. Anyone else? Only one. <laughs> All right, if you get it, then you're, you're a liar because <laughs> you're not supposed to get it. <laughs> you're supposed to learn it over the course. <laughs> um, so uh, we have spoken before that the marriage is a mystery because it's made by God and only him can unlock the mystery of that, uh, of, of marriage. And outside of him, good luck to understand or even to have uh, a good marriage or understand what, what the marriage is there for. And last week we spoke about the biggest problem in marriage, which is selfishness. And we said that uh, the, the, the key is denying myself according to Christ's commandment Denying myself is the key to resolve selfishness, and that's only by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that's the only key to happiness. As long as I haven't denied myself, I will never be happy. Never. And we said that marriage is a perfect opportunity for you to deny yourself, and only then you can experience happiness. So the happiness is not going to come from the partner, but it's going to come from denying the self according to Christ's command. Basically, kill yourself, hate yourself, and you'll be happy. You get it? Yeah, easy, huh? Very good. Um, so we spoke about what marriage is, uh, but we haven't spoken about what is it for, you know. Um, so today we're going to to talk about the mission of marriage. What is it for? You know, what, what, what are we supposed to get out of that? And in order to know what is marriage for, let's go back to the original design, okay? So God created heaven and earth, and as you know, created every creature, every detail, and he said, and everything was good. Everything was good. Everything was good. And then he created Adam, and Adam had to enjoy everything in there uh, that God created, had to name the animals, all of this. But the Lord said, it is not good, for the first time, it is not good that man shall be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And here you go, comes Eve. Eve comes to the picture and, you know, things change a little bit. And Adam had the biggest, like, surprise, you know, when, when, when animals were created and all of this, he was not as excited. But when Eve came, he said, wow, this is bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh. And, you know, she was Eve and they, you know, were happy. Um, but the story doesn't just end there. Originally, when God created Adam, he said something in the book of Genesis. He said, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Our, what is he talking about? What's our? It should be me, my, my likeness. But he talks about the Trinity the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Adam by himself can never be comparable to God, can never be on God's image because he was alone. And he needed a partner. God had it in mind, but in order for him to appreciate Eve, let him stay by himself for a little bit, let him, you know, enjoy his singleness. And then Eve comes and says, now the creation is complete because they are two and God is going to be the third person that are going to be Trinity as the Holy Trinity and the plan is there. So, let's get back to the original design. 
So why did Eve come? Not just to be the whole Trinity thing. You know, as God is Trinity, human beings have to be on the same image, but to be his helper. To be his helper. What does helper mean? The word that it was used in Hebrew is ezer, which means friend. Friend. Write this down. Friend. God wanted a friend for Adam. So if you really want to know the mission of marriage and why God made marriage, it's mainly for friendship. It's for, fri for friendship. You're going to hear this in Really? It doesn't, you know, look like it a lot. You know, I don't see that in many cases. Um, as a matter of fact, when friendship is lost in marriage, then marriage is lost. When friendship is lost from marriage, then marriage, the whole marriage thing is lost. A lot of people don't understand that. And we'll explain in a little bit how the whole thing of friendship goes out of the window so quickly and it becomes irrelevant in marriage. It's a very, very dangerous thing and it stays outside of God's will completely. When you have a best friend, when you have a good friend, is the best thing in the world. It's the best thing in the world. Is it easy? No, it's not. It's not easy by any means. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of back and forth. It takes a lot, a lot to build and keep a strong relationship. But it's the best thing in the world. The Bible said that, St. Paul, when he spoke about marriage, he said, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. From this you understand what the friendship is going to be, what the friendship is going to do, to bring her to, to himself glorious without blemish. The friendship that doesn't improve, the friendship that doesn't bring each other up, the friendship that doesn't build each other up is a gang, right? Right? What's the friendship? What's, 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 the, what's a gang? Group of very, very, very good bodies, but they don't bring each other up. So the friendship is bringing each other up to one direction that they agree on. Friendship usually <clears throat> starts through a common passion. We have a passion for something common. <clears throat> common vision, common appreciation to something outside of either person. So it has a common passion, has transparency, so we know the ins and outs. We're very, very open. We're very, very truthful. We're not putting any masks. And the third is there is consistency uh, um, in, in, in the relationship that, you know, we don't just give up on each other. You know, we're there for each other through the good and the bad. How is this going to work in marriage. There is a common goal which is the purpose of God, which is the will of God, which is eternity, which is being on the image of God. Because when God created them, he created them to be on our image. So the common goal is to be on his image. And we are going to help each other. We're going to be truthful with each other. We have this common goal and we're going to persist on this common goal. And this is what's going to keep the friendship.
So we can easily say that the mission of marriage is a spiritual friendship. Write this down on your outline. Spiritual friendship is a goal, a destiny. This is where we want to go. And we will walk together, will help each other, we will support each other to reach this goal that we have. Someone may say, wait a minute, but that's not fun. Where's the fun here? Where is the fun? Where is the excitement? Where is, there's no life in here. Where is the romance, the sex, the fun, the things that are supposed to be in marriage? Actually, all these things are there as a byproduct, not as a goal. They are there as a byproduct. This is something that you will get. This is a bonus. You get out of the design of God. You know, when you follow along the design of God, these things are going to come. The wrong thing is when you have these things as a focus or the goal, or the goal is fun. The goal can never be the fun. But, you know, you can't just go out of your, your home and the destiny is fun. No, you can have something. You can go to a game. You can go to a function, and you can have fun meanwhile. But the fun is not that thing or the goal. <clears throat> and when people don't find the fun in marriage, they say, you know, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's, it's fun, friendship, stuff like this. Can this really happen? <clears throat> when people look on each other, <clears throat> they have the option to say, either you could be my friend and we could work together, or I can never be a friend to this person. Or I can look at the person the way God looks at me and you and say, you could be the best person in the universe and I'm willing to invest in you as much as you invest in me that we may grow. I can see wonderful things in you. I can see God making you wonderful person, amazing pers person for his, his purpose. One of, the, <clears throat> uh, one of the authors once said, do you look at the person as a statue or you look at the person as a piece of marble that could be the best statue ever, that could be the best image ever? But if you look at the person as a statue, then this is what it is. This is not going to uh, be changed. As a matter of fact, the fun is in changing each other, is that we keep growing. The fun is in this destiny. The growth is like this year, we, you know, we get rid of the, the lack of patience. And this year, we learn that. This year, we learn this. And we grow. And when we have kids and one terrible, you know, moods and one kid would like, you know, crazy, and one is funny, one is this, one is, th one is that, and every person, every instant, every kid, every event is teaching and growing me and making this beautiful statue that God have in mind. The process of marriage is all about sanctification, refinement, glorification, growing from a step to another, and enjoying the journey. <clears throat> this will work as long as you are committed to the partner holiness, to the partner growth. You're not getting a perfect person. You're getting someone who's very imperfect just like you, who's a sinner just like you. And both of you you will learn and you will grow together. And if you are two pieces of metals, when they bud heads, sparks will come out. But they will be smooth in the end. 
both of them will be smooth in the end. How does this apply, practically speaking? If you're looking for a spouse, there's a big mistake that people do. People look for someone who has the criteria, and it will be a bonus, it will be nice, it will be fun if he or she could be a friend. That's wrong. When you look, you look for a friend. When you look, you look for a friend. And then maybe the friend is not, um, not as attractive. Maybe we can, we can work on that, or we can pray about that, or can do something with that. Or maybe the friend is not, um, doesn't fit a certain criteria or career that I had in mind. We could do something with this. But if you are having someone who's not a friend, who doesn't have the same common goal, then that's, that's a huge problem. Because the fun, you know, will end after some time, and the romance will fade away, and you will end up with just a person. So either you end up with a friend, or you end up with an idea, or something imaginary. So, practically speaking, looking, you're looking for a friend, working and having on the same goal. If you are married, then practically speaking, if you're married, then friendship with a spouse shall be first priority. First priority. Do you think this is the priority in marriages? Friendship? I don't think so. Many other things. Many practical things, life things, life events, practicality, work, career, this, that, kids, take priority. Wrong, wrong, wrong. God didn't create Eve to make the bed for Adam when he wakes up in the morning. He could do that, right? Right, gentlemen? Yeah, he could do this on his own. He can learn it, maybe after 10, 15 years, but he can learn it in the end. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need a maid. It's not like he needed a maid that God provided Eve. It's not that he needed someone to do things for him. He had angels. He had animals. He had stuff. He needed a friend. So if this doesn't become the focus, the whole marriage thing just falls apart. If this doesn't become the first priority. So what do usually people do when friendship disappears from marriage? They look for alternatives. One of the alternatives could be parents. Mom, she's old, I have to take care of her, I have to call her, I have to check that she, you know, is okay. All right? How are you going to do this? I just, I just call her like a few times a day. A day? Yeah, just check on her. Just make sure that she's okay. Okay, you're helping mom, right? Yeah. No, you're not helping mom. You're getting some emotions and some support from mom. You're using mom. That no wonder God said, leave father and mother, cleave to his wife. What's another alternative that people, children, we're busy with, busy with the kids. Excellent excuse. There's a lot of parents who take from their kids more than they give them. And marriage is not about kids. When parents talk about this, I tell them, when God created Adam and Eve, did they have kids? No, they didn't have kids. When God brought Eve to him, it's not just for the sake of kids. God could make kids, babies somehow, just Adam and some kids. You know, that's not the purpose. The, 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 the purpose of marriage was for that friendship. And as many, many, many counselors have said to 
people and books and everything, that the best thing you can ever give to your children, best education, best sex education, best everything you can ever give to your kids is the friendship between mom and dad. That is the icon that God made, okay? But this has got to be a priority, as I said. Okay, how is this whole friendship is going to work? We're going to talk about three things quickly. We call it the power of marriage, or if you want to put it between brackets, it's the power of friendship in marriage. It's not really the power of marriage, but the power of friendship within marriage. The first part is the power of truth. Write this down, the power of truth. The power to show to show you for who you really are. Thing is, no matter how much you spend time with your friends, with your you know, um, uh, colleagues, stuff like this, you don't, you, don't get every, you don't even get to know yourself. Until you're married, and then someone is living with you 24 hours, tells you how selfish you are. Nobody ever told me that I'm selfish. Therefore, something got to be wrong with you. No, Habibi. It's just because, you know, finally, you got to live with someone for 24-7, and that shows who you really are. <clears throat> the Bible says, there's a beautiful verse in Ephesians 4.15, speaking the truth and love, that you may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. You really want to grow up? You really going to walk the walk together all the way to your destiny? You got to be truthful with each other. You got to be truthful with each other. Big problem when we keep it inside, when the truth is not revealed, and when the truth is revealed but not in love. <clears throat> Very important when you tell your partner about something in him or her that you are saying completely out of love for their own growth. Jesus said that in Matthew 18. He said, if your brother sins against you, what do you do? You go to your brother, you talk to him, and tell him, you did this against me. What is the purpose? Jesus said that clearly, that you may win your brother, that you may win your brother. You win him to eternity, that you may win his soul. I don't think that in any other circumstance in life, anyone could be truthful to you in love more than marriage, which is, again, a way to grow. So, don't be alarm when you discover 10, 15, 20 things wrong about you when you get married. That's why you're married. That's why I'm here. I'm here to, you know, to show the, 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 the bad things come out that God may cleanse it and make me like him. It's exactly like having a heavy truck, you know, passing over an old wooden bridge. You'll find like the cracks are just open and, and you know, it's just that the, the bridge is going to explode. It's not because of the truck, but the truck shows all the weaknesses of that bridge walking over it. <clears throat> so the role of the spouse to lovingly, the key word, lovingly expose the truth in full humility, in full humility, bringing the truth not, not, so, not, not because I don't want to be hurt again, but because I care about you. I'm doing that for you. Also something to remember very well, that the sin is not a part of your spouse's inner being. Nobody is sin, is, sin is always a strange object. It's not part of me. A lot of times, 
I feel like the person is like mixed with manipulation. That's not true. Manipulation is something that I'm plagued with. But by the power of God and by the love of God, this could come out. So I don't look at anyone as bad and like the, the evil is in him or herself. Not at all. It's, it's, a, it's a strange object in there again. Um, because if I don't look at the partner this way, guess what's going to happen? If you, let's, let's say for example, if I look at my partner as a, a harsh person or inconsiderate person, you know what, what's going to happen? I'm going to look for a better one. I'm going to look for a considerate person. I'm not going to look at the partner so the inconsideration would go out, would leave by the power of God. The second is going to, ha to help with the truth is the power of love. What's the power of love? It's a very, very, in a very, very simple way. Every one of us is going to marriage with baggage. Baggage from childhood, bringing up, insecurities, missing love, missing attention, coming knowing that, you know, insecurities, so many hurts and wounds that I'm coming to marriage with. Every single person come to marriage with all this baggage. The only healing for these wounds is love. Continuous love and affirmation. No, you're not. You are a good person. No, you are the person that I want. You know, uh, who said that you are less than your brother? Who said that you, you're not as good as your sister? That is not true. Look at you. Look at the qualities you have. Continuous affirmation and confirmation that you are a lovable person, that you deserve to be loved. You are uh, born on, on God's image, and, and your worth is the blood of Christ. You are the hero of my life. Because this is who you are. And I made this decision when I married you. And, you know, I, I don't want to get into this because this is a very deep uh, topic, but also loving the person according to what the person needs not what I need. A lot of times when I love something, I want to give the same thing to, the, to my partner, not necessarily what he or she needs. Must realize that love is not a feeling, but being with me, putting up with me, forgiving me, day after day, tells me that you love me. Not just the romantic words and the flowers and all these, you know, things that passed away last Thursday and that's it, that's the end of it? No, that's, that's not what it is. That's for Valentine's Day. But the love is every single day, appreciation, confirmation, continuing to live with me, continuing to accept me, continuing to see me as a great person. This is true love. This love heals. Love heals. So this is a source of healing. Again, I'm not supposed to give you the things that you missed through your childhood, you missed in life. I'm not supposed to provide for that, but I'm supposed to offer the love of God, the love that is from God that gives you healing. Third and last is the power of grace. Power of grace is, you know, so love and truth, we work together, we work out things together, but you're going to mess up, and I'm going to mess up. You're going to do bad things. You're going to hurt me. Is there grace? Is there forgiveness? Is there a start fresh? Or there isn't? Because if there is, that's what keeps us going. That's what's going to keep the friendship, is the truth, the love, and giving you grace as much as you need that. <clears throat> That's all 
about the mission of marriage and what marriage is all about. But if the friendship goes away, again, the problem, the sins, the separation, the emotional divorce, whatever you want to call it, uh, the, the routine life, the life that is tasteless, all of this comes and all of this tamed marriage with, with an image that God never intended it for. So we'll give you uh, some time now to do discussion over what we talked about. And I think that's a good topic for discussion, especially if you really discuss what friendship is all about. And after you finish, you can just wrap up with a prayer and leave group by group. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.